G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you once more. Now, I thought this week we would experiment and do something a little bit different from how we normally do our um, episodes each week. And this week we're going to do it all with palette knives because I get a lot of comments and messages from people saying that they have a bit of trouble using the palette knife. So, of course, we will also use the more method of painting and we'll follow the three steps and we'll use the basic uh, color scheme, which I'll walk you through in a moment. So the big difference from what we normally do is we're not going to use three brushes. We're going to use an array of palette knives in this painting just for a bit of fun and for something different. I've got an array of them. I've just grabbed them from my uh, collection here. Now you don't need to have all of these, of course. These are just the ones that I laid my hands on. So I've got a couple of standard sort of palette mixing knives there. And one little small one, because we had a little beach scene, we might want to put some you know, smaller waves and things in. Um, I've got a flat edge one. I find that quite handy for doing edges and things. Uh, so it's always good to have a flat edge one. And then I've got a couple of bigger ones. So you, some of you might be familiar with this style of palette knife. This is uh, a Bob Ross Bill Alexander style. And um, we may use that. I particularly like this Liquitex big blade knife. It's good for getting a lot of colour down reasonably quickly. And then I use sometimes scrapers like this just to scrape paint back. This is one I got from a hardware store. The first thing I do, step one is of the more method of painting of course, is to get a drawing happening. So as always we'll use our blue and our red like so. Okay. Make up a nice dark and we need to add some thinner to that just to stop it from being too thick. We don't want our drawing thick. Okay, so let's get a little bit of that thinner in there and um, thin that paint down. A little bit of an ink like consistency is what we're after. So I'm going to, as I said, there's no photo reference for this one. I'm going to do a little seascape. It's going to be um, of a beach near where we live here. Um, it's called Sunshine beach one of the most beautiful beaches you'll ever find okay i might be a little bit biased but hey um so it's got a headland there and it drops away to a lower point out there okay now i'm not going to try and copy it exactly because as i said i'm making this up from my memory so i'm not going to fuss if i don't get it a hundred percent the way it actually is so this is just inspired by okay it's always a good approach is to say something's inspired by a subject rather than necessarily trying to paint that subject. Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm not concentrating enough on my drawing, but I'm, I don't necessarily have to have solid lines everywhere to make the drawing work. Okay, I'm going to put the ocean out the back there. And I'm going to keep this really simple today so that pretty much anyone can have a go. Now, if you don't like the idea of using a knife, of course, then by all means, do, do this one with a brush if you want to. There's absolutely, you know, one of the things that Learn to Paint Academy that I'm really focused on is not making things right or wrong. You know, the most important thing is just have a go, you know, like do whatever feels right for you and have a go. Um, who cares if it's not a masterpiece or the way you think that others might think it should be. This is your painting. Just do whatever you want to do and have a go. Use whatever colors you want to use, you know, but the principles that I teach, I hope just take those on board. Like use a limited palette when you're starting out, right? Um, it'll help you to learn to mix color. So things like that, are, um, I think are important. But at the end of the day, there's no hard and fast rules. It's just whatever feels good for you. Painting should be all about um, the enjoyment of it, shouldn't it? Having fun with it. Um, and, you know, enjoying it with others as well is important, which is why uh, we've got the Plain Air Paint Hour happening on the Sunshine Coast soon, which I'm involved in organising, and, um, you know, that's going to be a lot of fun to do. So, okay, so I'm starting to block in a little bit there. So basically, that's all we want. We'll put a little bit of um, cloud activity over here just to counterbalance. Um, that headland and it's a pretty simple sort of composition yeah so that's our drawing done step one of the more method 
Got our nice little headland in here. We've got a bit of a sweep with the water. We've got the backwater over there in the distance. Then we've got the sky, and we're going to put a little bit of a cloud in the sky um, towards the end. And, and this is make a nice little painting. So I've already sort of got the blocking partially started. We've got this purpley mix here. I'm going to push it just a touch bluer, perhaps. And maybe a little touch of gray, uh, the yellow in it to grey it. Okay. Now it's got a little bit green because I put too much blue in there. So I'll get a little touch of that red. And I'm going to just pick up a hint of white. Okay. Now notice I'm only wanting a little bit of white. So see how in my white pile here, I didn't go into the main pile. I just picked up a little bit that was sort of left over from previous painting. So I just wanted a little touch of it there. Okay. So there's a... It's fairly blue, so I'll just put more red into it. I want a sort of a darkish, bluey, greyish headland there. And we need a little bit of thinner into that. Okay. So I'm just using a, a thinning medium that goes with this brand of water mixable paints. Um, it's, I'm using Windsor & Newton. If you're using acrylics, as I said earlier, just use a touch of water or whatever medium you use um, for your acrylic paints. Okay, so let's just try this on for size. Because I want to just push this back a little bit into the distance, this um, headland, even though I've painted it fairly large. Okay, and notice I'm just, I'm not using any particular technique with the knife. I'm just loading up um, the... Oh, let me just get that in shot there. I'm just loading up that face of it there and I'm just using that just to spatula it on really. And I'm just taking your time with it. Okay, and all I want to do here really is just cover into that board so we don't have any white showing through and just get the basic outline. This is the shadow color that we're putting in here now. So remember the idea of our blocking is to just get our big shapes in with the right tone and start to get a feel for the values of the painting. Something like that. And let's just run that into this lower section here. So it's not exactly like Sunshine Beach. Those of you who know it will know that it's Sort of long and then runs up that way however it's going to make a nice little beachy scene and subject here and that's the most important thing isn't it creating a little painting that we're happy with because life's too short to do paintings we're not happy with okay so we can now venture into that backwater area. So let's get some ultramarine blue there. We get a little bit of that yellow ochre. Okay. A touch of that white in there. Okay, now we'll go a little bit thicker with the paint here. See that there? I'm just scraping through the pile of paint. Now I need to establish a bit of a horizon line here. So I'll just run that back and forward until I've got a horizon line I'm happy with. Okay. So this is the water that's way off in the horizon. I'm thinking that perhaps it needs to come down and touch lower. Um, so I'll just grab this paper towel and just pull some of that out. I'll cover that up with a sky paint, so don't worry about that. Okay, so I'll just level it off again through there. OK, 
Okay. Good, good. Now we'll just get a little bit more yellow into that mix. As the water gets closer to the shore, it becomes shallower. And the light bounces off the sandy bottom. Okay. Integrate a little bit of that greeny tone up into the back there so it's not a complete shift in tone. So remember, we're not here to refine this at this stage. We just want to get some pleasing tone in there for the blocking. That's all we're trying to do. In step three, we'll then start to adjust it and refine it and add some white foam and things like that in there. Okay, and then, so we use yellow ochre for that section. Now we'll come in with a little bit of the cadmium yellow light. A little bit more blue. Okay, so we're just shifting it a bit brighter, that tone now. And we'll just keep working it in. It's quite an easy, relaxing sort of process to do. We'll just choose where we want to have those. Okay, now I'm not really going for a realism look uh, as such. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of thinking of this as being a little bit more abstract. Not completely abstract, of course, but just I'm not so concerned of making it look exactly like you might see if you were to venture down to that beach. Um, just want to put my own feel into it, you know. So sometimes it's good to just make up a, a scene based on a subject that you know, but without directly using the reference photo. Because when you use the reference photo all the time, you kind of get into the trap of thinking that you have to recreate the photo. Uh, I don't think that's that healthy, to be honest. Now we'll take our bigger weapon here. One. We'll take a reasonable chunk of that white, a little pinhead of the yellow, a little pinhead of the red, a little pinhead of the yellow ochre. Let's just work that around. Whoop. Bit too much red, I suspect. That might make, we'll save that for our sky color. It wasn't exactly the color I was looking for. That red just dominated it more than I thought it would. So let's take another chunk of white. Okay. And then let's get a little pinhead of that yellow and a little pinhead of the yellow ochre. Okay, it's getting there. And that is how I'll go back and I'll scrape it back like so. And Turn the paint over. Okay, and I think we, I want it to be a little touch more yellow ochre than that. Even a little bit more than that, actually. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put that on fairly thick, so I'm just going to scrape into a big chunk of it. Look at that. All right, that's a nice, big, healthy amount of it there and then I'm just going to come in here and we'll just work this on so you know it won't take as long to get this down pulling a little bit of that dark into it okay if you get too much of that dark on your palette knife then you can always use a bit of paper towel just to clean that off so I'm using really thick and luscious paint here We get some nice textures in there. And 
just watch you don't pull too much of that green into your sand color it won't quite look right if you get too much in there i'll just push the yellow ochre a little touch more as it comes down a bit closer to us here Smudge the edges in there a little. And then with that dark yellow ochre, a little pinhead of red into it. That gives us a dark. And we can just run that dark along where we think some wet sand might be here. You know, as the waves crash up onto the beach. And um, then when they go back out, they tend to leave the sand wet. Okay. Uh, this sky here, we've got this pink. I'll add a little pinhead of blue to it. It's going to give it a bit more of a grey feel. Okay, I'll just lighten it off a little bit more, I suspect. Okay, jolly good. Let's just see how that looks here. Yeah, that's going to work when we connect that up. Come down that horizon line there. And notice how I'm just pulling that across. You just got to be careful when you come into these up against this other wet paint. Just take your time and use the point of the knife to get into there. Okay, let us get some sky tone now. So we've got our white there and get our blue and our ultramarine blue. Mix that in. Okay, so because there's one tone, I'll get a slightly darker version of that as well. Okay. So we'll start off with that darker version. Just run that into these top corners up here. So one thing that I've concluded from doing this is that if you're going to prepare an MDF board with the intention of doing a palette knife painting, try not to have rough texture in the gesso. All right, so I've got fairly rough texture in this one um, and it's just making it, I won't say it's making it difficult, but it's, you may find it a little bit difficult just to get that paint to get into those grooves. Okay, so I'm having to work a little bit harder than what I might have done if I was using a brush. However, if I was painting this on a canvas or a smoother surface then it shouldn't be a problem really shouldn't have too many problems at all with it okay so now I'm going for that lighter tone you can probably see the troubles I'm having with those grooves bit of a dramatic sky I think but uh that's good we love a dra good dramatic sky ok 
Okay, now we are coming to this pink here. I'm just going to integrate the two in. Might have a nice dramatic skyline. Lighting up a few spots there. But really we're pretty much finished our step two now. And it doesn't leave us with a lot to do really in step three. Um, I'm just going to put a few little highlights on and the rest of it's pretty much taken care of. There, there we go folks, that's so step two and I'm pretty happy with the way it's coming along. It's going to be a nice little seascape subject for you to have a go at at home. Um, we may perhaps adjust the shape of this a little, it's looking a bit flat there, so we'll do that in step three. Step three is all about, um, in the more Method of Painting, it's all about the refinement and the adjustment that we need and then details, highlights, you know, finishing touches. So we'll just make a few little tweaks at that point. But I'm pretty happy with the way we've gone. Step two's done, so now we'll get underway with step three. Okay, I'm going to take a little weeny little knife here, and we'll just get a bit of a highlight tone happening. So that really wants to be a yellow ochre and a lizard and crimson combo. Okay, a little bit of an orangey tone. Keep it slightly on the pink side though because the, we've got that light source in the sky pink. Okay, so just scrape it off and we'll get it on the edge is what we want. And let's just try that on here. Okay, it's probably a little bit yellow, but I'll mix it in with the red. form a few little rocky shapes in here. subtly adjusting it there. Now I mentioned about this being a bit straight here. It just needs a little kink in it. Um, but I could do it just by with the foliage, you know, I don't have to necessarily adjust um, the line that we have there, but we'll just get a little bit of a tone. And we'll just, uh, possibly when I was putting the sky in, I may have um, just lowered that. Now I haven't mixed up exactly the same tone, but that's okay because I'm going to put highlight over there anyway. In fact, let's get some highlight tone happening now. Use yellows and greens. A little touch of the white. 
pin out of the red. So kind of a eucalypty color for those who know Australian um, eucalypts and so on. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky that you can easily pull it out into the sky as I've done there. So I'll clean my palette knife and I'll just scrape that bit back. Okay. Somehow I pulled that up a little bit too high as well. So I'll just scrape that back. Just keep cleaning the palette knife each time. And then I can just move that paint around it. And that pretty much clears it up. You may need to just take a little touch more paint in there and paint over any issues. So yeah, it is a little bit trickier with the palette knife, I find. But the more you do it, the better at it you become. So hopefully this little demo today will inspire you to keep trying and practicing. Okay. Now I could take the smaller knife here if you're afraid of doing what I just did. It gives you a little bit more control. Okay. Now I'm putting that over fairly wet paint, so you've got to just be careful how you apply it. And it's difficult to explain what the best way to apply it is. It's just you just need to experience it, try it, muck it up, and then just keep adjusting the amount of pressure that you um, are putting on okay when you work into that wet paint it's important that you keep cleaning the knife though because uh, you pick up the underpaint along the way Little touch of it over those into those rocks there. out in that little area there so it's starting to come along nicely I think just get a little bit of a dark sort of rock color I kind of feel that I need to just get a few little darks back into here and now let's get some water happening some waves um, i'm going to do this really really simply i want to keep this project as simple as i possibly can um, because i want you to have a go at it i don't want you to just be a spectator it's okay to be a spectator but the way you learn to paint is really pain you know <laughs> um, demonstrations on youtube or wherever are good to a point but you won't improve much from them unless you actually have a go so we've got some white with a little touch of yellow in there. So yeah, so I'm going to keep this as simple as we possibly can, but um, it's pretty easy one for you to have a go at, yeah? So a little bit of white water there. Now notice I haven't blocked it in completely over on the side here. I want to leave a little bit of a, a gap for the eye to come around and be able to see out to the back, okay? Now for that distant area there, I'm just going to get a very thin little edge of that paint on the knife there and then we can just tap that in through there just pop a few little indications of some distant water got a bit of a flare up there maybe it's a whale jumping out which happens quite frequently at Sunshine Beach and the beaches nearby 
during whale season, which it's uh, just starting to be now, which we're all excited about. You can go and see the whales once more. So it's looking pretty good. I'm happy if this is just a little demo. Um, you know, we, there's not a lot of planning and thought gone into it. It's just, let's just pick a little subject and have a go. So I think it's coming out reasonably well for that sort of approach. So I'm not going to overdo the foamy water, just a little bit to all it needs. Um, it's an indication, it's not the whole wave. Okay. Don't put the whole wave in. Don't put the whole ocean in either. <laughs> now notice I've got these lines here, are just a little bit too... I don't know, too much. So I'm just going to soften those out a little. Can I pop a little figure in there maybe without mucking it up? It's always the risk, you know, when you get it to a point where you think, oh, it's not bad. You then come in and go, person there. A little bit of shadow out the back. They're walking fairly briskly. So this is just Perhaps unnecessary. Oh, there's a little dog. How about that? There you go. Sitting there watching the waves with the dog. What better way to spend a day? A little a light blue beanie on because it's a little bit cold here in winter at the moment. I may just need a little touch of shadow. Okay. And we've ended up with a neat little painting. So there you go, folks. I'm quite happy with that as a little palette knife painting. You know, it's just a little small one. But you know, in a little white frame, that would actually come up reasonably good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, I might let it sit for a week or two and maybe come back and play around with it and adjust it. But overall, pretty happy with the way that's come up so um, I challenge you to have a go at this one at least play around with the knives and you can see you don't need I only used a couple of them at the end, the end of the day um, have a go you know grab some palette knives grab a bit of paint an old board or canvas and create something that really inspires you you can even do this one um, my interpretation of Sunshine Beach or whatever subject that excites you right um, but the most important thing is that you do have a go, get the knives out and look, start to practice and learn how to paint with palette knives. Because then that way when you're doing a you know, bigger painting with brushes, you've got a bit more skill with the knife. So when it calls for, I need a bit of knife painting, you'll have developed a few more skills. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. I've enjoyed it. Now, if you haven't done so already, please drop by the Learn to Paint Academy, right? It's our online uh, academy where you go into more detail about the more method of painting and so on. And there's a free course there that you can register for. And you'll, I think there's four or five painting demonstrations and I'll teach you more about the more method of painting and why it works. So I'll pop the email address or the web address here, www.learntopaint.academy. See you over there and uh, have a go at this one and, and have fun. Happy painting. Cheers for now.